Hi Anna, um, first of all, thanks for what you're doing, good on you, more, we need more journalists like you, more people to get things out. Um, my name's Tim, I'm a school teacher, I'm 45 years of age. Where to start with all of this? Um, I think I could talk for a long time, but I think the best thing I can do is give people some pointers and some things for them to look at, to research and to uh, draw their own conclusions from. Last September, the repo market, which is the overnight lending for banks, went absolutely ballistic in America. Um, they were lending hundreds of billions of dollars every night. I was saying to my friends, two or three friends, I told, look, Telling you now, there's going to be an economic collapse or crash next year. It's going to happen 100%. They can't keep doing that. It's Sooner or later, it's going to blow. So I knew that there was going to be a massive, major financial incident happening this year. Um, that You can look at that. It's called the repo market. It started in September, the overnight loans. So that was on the cards. Then, like everybody else, you were watching things on YouTube, watching things on the news. Everybody was getting a bit worried, a bit concerned about what was going on. And, and I, at one point, I really did think there was a serious virus to be scared of. Um, I knew it was planned, 100%. I'm convinced and sure that it is planned. Um, and I was sure it was planned, but I actually thought it was serious. Now, it's clearly not very serious but nevertheless it was planned um things that people need to look at have a look at some uh, you know do a search for event 201 okay event 201 was a pandemic exercise ran by the bill and melinda gates foundation and that took place in october last year now what are the chances that you have a full-on pandemic exercise um, you know, dry run scenarios two or three months before a pandemic is declared or two or three months before a pandemic starts. You know, that doesn't that doesn't sound right to me. Something else people need to look at is something called um, Lockstep, which is from 2010. And that was by the Rockefeller Foundation. And Lockstep is basically a blueprint for what is happening now. It's that document is 10 years old. If you read it, it's quite bone chilling, really, because it, it, it just it's just a, a, literally a blueprint of what we're going through and w what's coming next. And it's very disturbing. Um, that's online. For, have a look at it. Like I say, that's been there for 10 years. This is planned. Um, something else people need to look at is something called ID 2020, which is basically a new system of identification that they have in mind for us um, you can see how this whole scenario the pandemic everything else the testing track and trace all this ticks a lot of boxes for them so does the cashless society which they want so they can have full control over us you know they're pushing a lot of places are pushing not to take cash um but you, there's always a transac transaction, there's a transaction of goods that you're buying or there's a transaction of uh, coffee or they hand you the card machine or you hand them your card. There's always a transaction. So why not cash? It's clear there's an agenda. Um, and ID2020 kind of fits into that. Something else people need to look at is something called Agenda 21. Okay, in 1982... 179 countries signed up for Agenda 21, which is basically to totally transform the way we live. Um, it was signed up all them years ago, and it's 2020 now, and this is that was Agenda 21, you know? So, I don't know. It's disturbing. There's also Agenda 2030. Look into it. It sounds all nice and wishy-washy with words like sustainable and and all this, but they want to put everybody in smart cities um, so they can have, you know, just smart cities, full control,
people not living in rural areas. They want to have, you know, full control over the resources, all, all the elements, you know, all the metals, products, everything, landscape. They want full control of everything, a full itinerary of everything. Um, and again, you know, I find it disturbing because they, they do not want people in, to live in rural areas. They want people to live in these big, smart cities, which makes you question, you know, what was going on with the forest fires in Australia? How is it that all that was allowed to burn? You know, we, there's geoengineering. They can make it rain. You know, how is those forest fires going on for so long? Um, also, there's been lots of forest fires in California as well. They want people out of rural areas. Something else um, that I want to mention is the World Economic Forum website. Um, days after the pandemic was declared, if you went on the World Economic Forum website, which I did, you know, the, the extent of this website, and it's all based around COVID, it's like a response to COVID. It's 32 layers deep. That website... There's no way that could have... You couldn't build that website in weeks or months. That was months and months and months in the making, you know, and it popped up as soon as the pandemic was declared. That's the World Economic Forum website. Um, again, that just shows you it's so thorough. It's unbelievable how planned and thorough and deep it is. Um, somebody else, something else I want you to look at is look into a lady called Jane Bergenmeister. She's an Austrian journalist. In 2009, she accused the WHO of trying to start a pan pandemic by um, contaminating swine flu vaccinations with the live flu, the, the live swine flu. Um, she filed a charge with the FBI against the WHO, the UN and um, some other organisations, which I can't remember. But look into Jane Bergenmeister. Again, don't do that on Google because nothing really comes up. You have to use a different search engine, duck and go, the amount, which brings us on to something else. The amount of censorship going on on Google, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter is disgusting. Um, we have, we're supposed to have freedom of speech. They're censoring and keeping important information away from everybody. Um, I think I've given people enough things to look at there. Have a look at those things. They are disturbing. I am um, concerned about where this is going. It's obviously planned. They've obviously been planning it for a long time. It fit. It ticks a lot of boxes. It, it fits the, the agenda of, of the way they want things to be. And where's it going to stop? You know? One minute they're saying no masks, ne next minute they're saying wear a mask. You know, one minute they're saying you shouldn't wear gloves. Now there's talk that they're going to push us all to wear gloves. It's almost like they're mocking us, you know. Um, there's no real evidence that masks should be worn for a healthy person. They're, they're actually, it's not, not healthy. Um, if you look at the evidence, the evidence is very sketchy on that and pointing towards them actually being unhealthy for healthy people. If you are symptomatic and you are, you know, coughing, sneezing, a mask would protect other people. But actually, if you're, you know, healthy, is a mask going to stop you from catching something? Unless it's a fitted, proper mask, you know, being fitted by an expert. This, it's not going to offer any protection, is it really? Anyway, um, that's, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for what you're doing, Anna. Keep doing it. The world needs more journalists like you, more people like you. Look into the things I've said. Event 201, Lockstep, the Rockefeller Foundation, ID 2020, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, um, the World Economic Forum website. Have a look at Jane Bergenmeister's um, documents on online also. And um, ah, another good one. Have a look at the Mirror Project on YouTube. They're doing a lot of good things. Um, they're really trying to get some good information out. And it's very professionally done. And it's very concise. And it's a good introduction and a good overview of what's going on to people who 
might not have been exposed to this information before. Thanks for your time.